welcome you to Guest Baptist Church tonight. It's good to have each of you with us, and uh, it's good to have Brother Gary Britton. Uh, he is the uh, campus minister at uh, Jacksonville State, and he's going to be sharing with us here in just a little while. I know we've got some Jacksonville State graduates in the house tonight, uh, but uh, he's going to be sharing with us in just a little while, and we've been looking forward to hearing from him. Uh, you just mind the Lord tonight, and I promise you it'll be in order. Uh, Brother David, would you open us with a word of prayer?
story of his love is the greatest ever told. He loved me to death until the end. When he prayed, Father, forgive them. It's a love that's not deserve his mercies and I don't deserve his touch but on a cross with arms wide open he said I love you this much he loved me to death until the end when he prayed Father forgive them it's a love that I'm going to start out by giving y'all a little free advice tonight. Hardly ever do that since I spent so much time as a psychiatrist and everything, but here it goes. Uh, y'all pay close attention tonight and behave yourselves because I've known a few people that was redheaded and had some real high temper. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all uh, be on your toes. I'm just kidding. Playing with you, brother. Know that I'm unworthy to call upon your name. All my life I've been a sinner, and for that I am ashamed. But I heard that you would listen, so I'm sending you. My plea, I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. But could you please come down to me? I know that there are others who could offer more than I. Promise you I'd understand If for me you have no time I 
think I've just hit bottom and I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy Lord to come to you could you please come down to me well I guess that I'm reaping from the seeds that I have sown and Lord you owe me nothing we haven't spoken for so long but if you could spare some mercy Lord I pledge my life to thee yes I will Lord I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? I know that there are others who could offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand. If for me you have no time I think I've just hit bottom And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you But could you please come down to me Think I've just hit bottom And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you But could you please come down And come down to me I instill that kind of fear. Maybe we need to take an offering right now. <laughs> My name is Gary Britton. I serve as one of your state missionaries uh, for Alabama Baptist. And I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you for your giving through the cooperative program. I want to tell you a couple of things you probably haven't had a chance to know. Alabama Baptist Convention, and as Dr. Rick Lance, our executive director, is fond of saying, we are by far, uh, we are not the largest convention in the country. This is not the most populous state in the U.S., nor are we anywhere close to being the wealthiest. And understanding, I think it's, it's Texas, Missouri, and Virginia have two Baptist conventions in their states. But of, of Baptist state conventions, Alabama Baptists have led the nation in giving through the cooperative program to Southern Baptist Convention dollars. You have given more dollars than any other, conven uh, any other convention in the country. And so I need to say thank you. Because as one of your state missionaries, you have been faithful in your giving, even during COVID-19. I know that next door to us in the Georgia Baptist Convention, I've been told that um, there are nine campuses this spring that don't have collegiate ministry going on because of shortfalls in cooperative program giving in Georgia. So I want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Um, the other thing uh, that I want to say to you is, and uh, Chris Mills, who leads our uh, collegiate missions efforts in our, uh, in our office through the state convention, uh, printed a t-shirt that he sent out to students who were not able to serve last number. And that is, and what the t-shirt said was, the mission 
hasn't been canceled. There's a world that still needs to hear the gospel. And we need to be about the business of the Great Commission. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. And I'm going to talk to you about my ministry uh, at Baptist Campus Ministries at Jacksonville State. I would tell you that, um, that as BCMs across the country, you probably don't know this either, we are the largest ministry to college students in the U.S. You know why you don't know that? Because by and large, we're funded by your gifts and the offering plate every, month, every Sunday. You know, we are funded, uh, my salary, our building that we have on campus are funded through the cooperative program. Our local ministry budget is funded through our uh, two or three associations around us and a handful of churches who give direct support so that we can carry on a ministry to students. But what you don't know is, uh, you don't know that because we're not sending you envelopes in the mail asking for your direct support. The other thing that came out in statistics, and these are coming from statistics from all the groups as far as who they're reaching, but Baptist Campus Ministries, under its several names around the country, reaches almost as many students as all the rest of them put together. Why? Because we're at places like Northeast Community College in Rainsville. We're usually on those campuses about the only ministry that is there. And we do that all over this country. And in doing so, we are reaching more students with fewer staff members than all the others put together. That's not saying that we're in competition. I've spent most of my years at JSU preaching to my own students that the other ministries on ca campus are not the competition. The competition is lostness. Yeah. And so, though we don't share all the same doctrinal views on everything, the other Christian ministries on campus, the campus ministers who work with those groups, are my colleagues in ministry. Yeah. And we are working on the same team to reach a lost student population with the gospel. So let me pause right there. Matthew chapter 28, I hope you can quote it with me. Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. I've been reminded quite a bit over the past few years, there's only one command in the Great Commission. You know what that is? It's not go. That's a participle. As it was said by an old Kentucky preacher years ago, properly translated is, be in Jesus going anyway. Wherever you go, here's the command, make disciples. We are called, and my mission on campus as a ministry from the over 3,000 Baptist churches of the Alabama Baptist State Convention, to the campus, I've been called to make disciples. And as Robbie Gallaty in his book, Growing Up, says, you haven't truly made a disciple till you hit the fourth generation. You're making disciples who make disciples who make disciples. We're not trying to add. We're trying to multiply because we cannot reach the world by adding people to the church. We need disciples multiplying all over this world. Jeremy and Tricia Randolph, Jeremy graduated from UAB, was involved in BCM there. Tricia came, went to Jeff State and then transferred to JSU. They served with the International Mission Board in China. They got, their visas weren't 
renewed. They are now back in the States. But in working with a people group in a mountain region in China, there were villages where there were no believers. By the time they left China, there were villages that were mostly Christian. There were villages where the women worked in the fields and the men stayed drunk most of the time and beat their wives. But once they came to know Jesus, there were husbands and wives working side by side in the field, and God healed families. Do you understand there are places in this world where the name of Jesus is yet to be spoken? So we need to understand that there's a need to place before college students the challenge of investing their lives in sharing the gospel. This morning, when I did my daily Bible reading in Joshua, I'm in the part where they're allocating territory. I had my one-year Bible open to that. I have got this Bible out and open to the book of maps in the back. And I was trying to locate some of those places as I was reading through this and and all those strange named little towns and all. But then I came across twice in my Bible reading. I think it was in, I won't say it's 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere through there. But where they're allocating the land. But two different times it says, but no property was, was allocated to the Levites. Because it said, the Lord is their inheritance. You know what they preach to folks at Jacksonville State? Get an education, get a job, be successful, and success is make more money so you can give it back to the university. Amen? That's what they preach. We are counterculture. Every one of us need to understand Jesus is our inheritance. There's nothing more important in this life than serving Jesus. And a life is not wasted to, to follow the call of God, to move across country. I have two girls graduating in, in April, or 1st of May. One of the girls, through our, our, uh, our Southern Baptist Convention, one girl is moving to Phoenix where she served with Jen Sin. And she is committing two years of her life at least to get a job there, plug in to a church plant, but to make a difference for the kingdom. Another girl worked in Portland a couple of summers ago. She is moving to Denver to do the same thing. Get a job, plant herself, help a church to grow. Is that a waste of a life? I have a feeling there's a couple of mamas that may support this, but they're feeling a little stressed. I know I had uh, my oldest sister and brother-in-law were missionaries in El Salvador back in the, uh, the 80s. And my late wife and I had been to a student conference with Dr. Keith Parks of the old, what we called the Foreign Mission Board years ago. By the way, Dr. Parks, in his preaching, could make you feel guilty for living in the U.S. He had that ability and we prayed and we told God, we'll go if you call us. God never called us to do that. But I know in talking to my mother, who was fully supportive of my sister and brother-in-law serving in missions, but when we told her that we had prayed that, she said, no, one's enough. Let me know the stress on a parent. But you know, even beyond that, the greatest call of God is to plant yourself in a place where you're serving Jesus. But you know what? It's not just in El Salvador or China or anywhere else you can think of. It's right where you are. You don't have to move away. You need to plant yourself where you are for the sake of the gospel. I had a former student who used to try to be so funny, and he would always say, remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Makes sense for the gospel. The only place you can share the love of Jesus 
is right where you are. And so it's not, I'll do it when I go there. As a seminary professor said one day, if you think that serving Jesus is after you get out of school when you go, he said to a group of minister, people training for ministry, he says, you'll get to that first church and then you'll say, no, when I go to the better church. And then it will be when the kids get older and then it will be something else and you'll spend your whole life never serving Jesus. You've got to serve Jesus right here, right now. So we are helping students to see they need to go. But you know what I need? Well, let me, let me start in a different place. BCM, our building on campus, owned by Alabama Baptist, right in the middle of the campus. For those of you who know JSU, we're diagonally across the intersection from the International House. We're two doors down from JSU's 12-story library building. We're in a great location on campus. But you know who it's easy to attract? Is the good little church kids that have grown up in church and they're looking for a good, safe place to recreate their youth group. You know who I'm looking for? Not people who want to be safe from the campus. I'm looking for 18-year-olds coming to college who say, I'm serving Jesus is not after I get out of JSU. It's while I'm here that I have been sent to JSU for a reason, and that is to share the gospel, to grow, and to learn how to be a Christian in unfriendly environments. Now, there are lots of good Christian folks on campus. Don't get me wrong. But the culture is not Christian. And you know what? We live in a world that is not Christian. So why do we find it surprising that the campus isn't? Matter of fact, you can go to campus. You can find anything you want. You really can. Before I get too far, let me pull it back. I need students coming to JSU who see themselves as called by God to make disciples no matter where they are, and for at least four years, they're going to be at Jacksonville State University, and they are missionaries to this campus. That's who we are. Now, we talk about this in our group. You know, there are different ways. I, I have a student who graduated just a year ago. Uh, actually two years ago now because he has his master's from Auburn now. And Caleb would come in and he would talk to me about people in his classes, people in his dorm, as he shared the gospel with folks in conversation as a part of a relationship. We need to do that. But you know what? JSU's a big school, about 9,000 students. Hard to be best friends with all of them. There are people that if you don't make an intentional effort, you're never going to cross paths with some people. So yes, we need students who will share in relationship, but sometimes we have to go out of our way. We have to go out of our way so that we can cross paths with somebody and have an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. 11... A little over 11 years ago, I was remarried. When I married Donna, her son, JB, uh, who was a high school All-American athlete, parade All-American, played in the Army All-American game. My stepson is six, seven and a half, weighed a little over 300 pounds when he played football. He's down to about 235 now. He looks like a basketball player, six, seven and a half. Started on the offensive line at Ohio State for three years. And we were driving around campus after he was finished with football one day. And the BCM's been taking freezer pops out to the marching Southerners. Uh, Ken Botterford and I were talking about it. It's getting close to 25 years now. And 
<laughs> we were talking about that, and JB said, "You know, Gary, you should do that. You should take them out to a football team. They would love that." So, six or seven years ago, I started doing that. Um, it was August during football camp, stinking hot out there. One afternoon, football practice was over. I had the freezer pops out, and Coach Gross came by. I'd gotten to know him a little bit well enough to say this, but I said, you know, Coach Gross, they don't like you much right now, but they love me. I had some offensive linemen. I don't go to the whole practice. I show up toward the end, and uh, – and some of the old linemen out on the practice field, you get out and there's a little bit of gravel and sand and stuff, and my little rolling cooler made noise crinkling across that gravel. And some of the old linemen said, Brother Gary, we like it when you show up because we know we're getting toward the end of practice. So, uh, but I've, I've had fun with that. But, you know, it's a different culture that I go into. I was not an athlete. Coach Gross's fifth grade son is turn, turning into a big boy. He, he said he's about 120 pounds in fifth grade. And he's not, he's big. He's not big here. He's getting on up there. For, he's tall for a fifth grader. You know, I was this height and weighed 135 when I graduated from high school. I was a skinny kid. You know, uh, this is not, football is not my culture, but I've started hanging out with the football team. Matter of fact, at 9.15 last night, I was at the Hilton Garden Inn in Oxford doing a devotion for the football team. I've gotten to know them. I get a chance to share the gospel. Last night, it was 56 football players. That's the ones that they take to the hotel. We have to go out of our way, get into situations that we're not comfortable in and put ourselves out there in faith by the way that great commission we started with who does the authority belong to it's not me it's jesus jesus says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me and on the basis of his authority he's the one that tells us to go out and make disciples. We need to impact the campus with the gospel. And we're not doing it by ourselves. There are other groups on campus that are doing the same thing. And we rejoice with them when they, they have successes. But you know, one of the things that I, changing gears again, that I've discovered with students, I have students who come to campus that they've been discipled well. But I also have students who come to campus and they tell me that they want to go deeper in discipleship. But one of the things I found is sometimes we want to go deeper and skip over the elementary things of our faith. Baptists have long held that we're a people of the book. As a matter of fact, as Southern Baptists Several years back now, we even argued loud and long about who believed it better and which adjectives were better to which. But still the same thing, if this is an average Baptist church, only about two out of ten pick this book up between Sundays. It's the truth. And it's the same thing with my students. This semester, with Mostly just my leadership had five student, or four students a day, two days a week, that we did what we called a discipleship lunch and learn. And I went back to the basics of what it means to be a Christian. We talked about your reading, reading your Bible. And you know, as I, even knowing, doing a weekly checkup, how many days have you read your Bible this week? There's still, even knowing that we were going to check up, two, three. Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And yet so many times we're walking in the dark. We're walking in the dark because we are not 
finding Jesus in every part of the Bible. I remember years ago as a very young pastor, starting into Leviticus one year, reading my Bible, saying, Lord, show me yourself in Leviticus. Because I, like you, were like, oh, no, where I made it to Leviticus. And then I was reading, I think it's in chapter 5. If you cannot afford a lamb, bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. And God suddenly showed me the gospel there. We aren't able to live up to his commands. I don't have enough money to buy a lamb. But God provided another way. He called us to live a life of perfect obedience and holiness in relationship to him. But in sin, we messed it up. And Jesus provided another way. God provides a way. We need to read the Bible looking for Jesus in every part of it. They did, uh, years ago, I had a, a DVD called the video bible i think that was it and there in the matthew the first chapter where they do the the genealogy oh man that actor did a great job all he's doing is quoting scripture but it's an older man with a young boy and as he quotes so and so is the father of the so and so and he goes on down but it's like he's telling the family story it was beautiful. And we need to find the beauty of Scripture in leading us to Jesus. We want to bypass Scripture reading. And so we have no foundation. We want to bypass prayer. By the way, tonight when I leave here, I'm going back to a leadership meeting at the BCM. And I've asked the students this past week to read a little 90-page book um, by Donald Whitney uh, that's called Praying the Bible. And he advocates opening up, he says, start at the book of Psalms, the prayer book of the Bible, and read it, but pray it back to God. It is our prayer language, and he says that keeps us from our boring repetition where all of our prayers sound just alike. Let's learn to pray. And, and as he points out, you can still pray for your family. You can still pray for your children, but you've got a new language to do it in. You want to know God? You've got to find him in his word. The clearest way God will ever speak to you is from his word. And by the way, you don't need a preacher there. God will speak directly to you from his word. So we're trying to help students to grow up in their faith. I used to say that my favorite role in BCM, and I still don't know how to say it different, was, was the role of devil, devil's advocate. You know, student says something. Well, why? Are you sure that's right? Because students are good. They know the answer to every question I ask in a Bible study is Jesus. They've been given that back since they were in elementary school and Sunday school. So why? What does the Bible say about that? And to help them to take the content of the faith, the good content of the faith that they've learned here in church, but to make it their own. As they grow in every other part of who they are and all the different decisions that they have to make during the college years, to help them to grow up in their relationship to Jesus. Let me say, this is kind of going back in the direction, but we're also in BCM helping students to put their faith into action right where they are. Most years, COVID, we, have, we didn't do it again this year. We do a food drive for a local ministry center, and we've paired it with a fundraiser for missions but we get students out in, the, in front of the grocery stores in town, and we're just, we're just collecting food for a ministry. We are some of the first among college groups that have 
volunteered as untrained volunteers alongside Baptist Disaster Relief. As a matter of fact, every year for the past six or seven years, we've been involved in responding to disasters all over the Southeast, North Carolina, South Carolina, several places in Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Puerto Rico. As a matter of fact, when three years ago, when the tornadoes hit our campus, we had one team in Puerto Rico, one team in Houston uh, doing this disaster rebuild. When, uh, and we had several students' cars damaged that were parked on campus that week. You know, college students need to learn that faith is giving back. And as a matter of fact, some of the best witness we can ever do is by serving other people. So now, with what I've just described, is that any different than the role of a church in a community? It's just our focus is Jacksonville State University. And the other thing that I would say to you, there are lots of good causes out there. Do you know that? And I've had to learn across the years, just because somebody has a great cause doesn't mean it's a call for our ministry to get involved. I have to guard my ministry and keep the focus that we are primarily charged with ministry to and through Jacksonville State University. So we keep our focus, just as you and your community have to keep the focus on sharing the gospel, discipling those who come to Jesus, and helping them to see God's call for their life and for your life together as a church. It's the same thing. How long do we need to do this? As long as freshmen st keep starting classes in the fall at JSU. So how do I wrap this up with a church that's 64 miles from campus? I think that's what my GPS said. First of all, I would say to you, you're right here in the backyard of Northeast. Keep reaching students on that campus. Find out how your church can partner with ministry at Northeast Community College. Keep saying, start saying to your students early, not when they get to high school, when there's at least by the start of middle school, when you go to college, you need to be involved in Baptist campus ministries. You need to get, be working on them. And then pray for us. It is a challenge, especially this past year. It has been a challenge. It is hard to reach students when we go set up a table on campus and there's hardly anybody out and about. We still have the need to reach students, but it's harder than it's ever been. And we need your partnership. You're already partnered with us, but pray for campus ministries around this state that we can be good stewards of the gospel that's been entrusted to us. I've been at JSU for 31 years now. God has blessed me. If God willing, three years from now, I'm going to turn the mantle over to somebody else. It's going to be time. They, need to, they will need some fresh blood. But COVID canceled last fall a, a reunion that I had planned you know how long BCM's been at Jacksonville State University? 91 years now. That's how long we've been reaching students. But we need to keep going because the students are the future. Well, they're the present, but they're also the future of our churches. And you don't make money by reaching college students. But I would say you don't spend it, you invest it. And we need to understand the importance of campus ministry and reaching students 
with the gospel. Thank you for the opportunity. And I'm going to end this just a little bit different tonight. Is it okay? I want to ask, do you have any questions to, for me about Baptist campus ministry work around our state, especially at JSU? relationally and you never know we this spring because we can't be in front of people uh, we had some yard signs you know like the campaign signs and we got permission to put them in front of the dorms and uh, by the way uh, I would invite you if you have your smartphone we have a JSU BCM app one of my new uh, do uh, job titles is I'm an app developer, um, but we we contracted with a company, but we put our app um, on there. If you look up JSU BCM on the App Store, we're the only thing that I don't know about um, Google or anybody else, but uh, on the Apple uh, Store, uh, we're the only thing that pops up when you put in JSU BCM, but. We're trying to speak their language, you know. But the best way is a student living in a dorm, talking to a next-door neighbor, and bringing them with them. Yes, sir. Okay, when you graduate, when you go to high school, yeah, you. You can look up jsu.edu. You might need to wait one or two years before you apply. Okay, but uh, look it up, and uh, you can go ahead now when you're on your computer, look it up, and, and there'll be somewhere on there to, that says apply. So, by the way, it costs money to apply, so don't do it now. <laughs> okay. I could have given you the smart aleck answer and said by car. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Either I did a great job of explaining or you're totally confused. Well, Pastor, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you. During mission months, we've learned from different missionaries what they do, what, and, and uh, uh, Brother Gary had actually, I think the state had uh, invested in some of the campus ministers to contact some of the pastors. Uh, when, when COVID started hitting, and a lot of folks don't know this, uh, but our state board of missions is awesome. Uh, they have kept in, in, in monthly contact with every pastor uh, to say, hey, how can we pray for you? Uh, what's going on? Do, do we need anything to help you? And Brother Gary was one of those guys that called me. And, uh, and, and I got to talking with him. And, and you know, I, I, I thought, I'm going to say this guy's number. Uh, man, he, he prayed with me over the telephone. And that's something that I just I appreciate. I think... Uh, Thank them uh, for what he does and, and what he did there on that day with me. Uh, but, you know, hearing what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, he's the pastor down there for those kids. And I'm thanking God for that because I know how hard it is. I'm thanking God for a faithful man that will stand up and, and, uh, and, and be that role model and, and be that one to... Uh, to disciple others uh, because that really is our job. I'm thankful for him and his ministry. I'm thankful for to be a Southern Baptist. I'm thankful to be a part of the cooperative program. Uh, and I'm sure thankful to be a part of an Alabama Baptist because they are phenomenal. Uh, Dr. Rick Lance and all of them are just phenomenal. Uh, anybody, anybody got anything tonight? Here's how we're going to end. I want you to stand. We're going to pray. And, but don't leave tonight without speaking to Brother Gary, telling him uh, how much you appreciated him, okay? Y'all pray with me. Father.
Lord, I love you. I thank you and I praise you, God, for, for this night. Brother, I, I thank you, Lord, for uh, Brother Gary. I thank you, God, for his ministry. Father, I lift up to you uh, BCM uh, at JSU. I, I lift up to you all of those other campus ministers that, that, uh, uh, that work at all of these colleges. God, I pray, Lord, to, for, to see a great revival uh, in our college campuses, Father. Uh, Lord, there's so much lostness, and that's God, that's our enemy, that's our adversary. And, and Father, as they share the gospel, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would uh, shine the light on, on some of those students. And uh, uh, God, let us see a great revival uh, spring out of our college campuses. God, I want to thank you uh, for those that are faithful to do the work of ministry. God, I want to thank you, Lord, for those that are making disciples who make disciples. Father, I pray, God, that if we're... Uh, if we're being faithful to what we're supposed to do, that's what we're going to do. And God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us uh, uh, to keep us faithful in doing just that. Father, Lord, we love you. Uh, we pray for safety and, and blessings upon uh, Brother Gary and his ministry. Thank you, Lord, again for uh, the words encourage, of encouragement we heard tonight. And God, we just pray that you'd continue to bless. Bless here. Uh, bless in this church. God, bless outside the doors of this church. Bless each member. Uh, Father, as they, as they go about their daily routines tomorrow, Lord, we love you, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen.